Welcome back, Pokemon Trainers. We are here, we're finally here at the <laughs> finals of the Sheffield Regional Championships. And we got two amazing players for you. We got Michele, Michele Gaffelli <laughs> and Lee Provos. I'm going to try to pronounce his name right from now on, but... It's the hype nonetheless. What do you think, Lou? I am so excited for this. We had such an intense day yesterday. Eight mm. rounds of Swiss. Sometimes we only hit seven, but we managed to get eight in a grueling day here in Sheffield, day one. In the heat, in the intensity of this competition, there are world invites at stake yeah. here. And we've managed to get through all of that day one to day two where we had some intense top eight games. A lot of them went to game three in that set as well. A lot of energy being absorbed there through to top four. And we now have two finalists. And I am so excited to be able to see both these players here in this position. You know, you've got Michele who's always top cutting things. He's doing yeah, so, so crazy. well, but he's made it through to the finals now. We saw him miss this opportunity in Stuttgart and then Lee, someone who is such a veteran of this competition, but has just not been making the names for himself in the most recent season. He got his world invite yesterday just by getting, I think it was top 32 he needed and he's now in the final. Yeah, isn't it funny? Like he came there and he was like, okay, I'm, I just need a little bit of points. I need to get my world unified. Uh, then I'm happy. Yes. And now he's here <laughs> in finals. And for Michele, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a different issue. He wanted to get, get his day two invite and yes. he He's got it in the bag for now, for sure. He's got a lot of points now after this regional and so they're both now just playing for something extra on top of it, basically. They're going for the title. Yeah, yeah. You know, they want those extra prizes, the brick that says champion, mm -hmm. not runner-up or finalist, just champion. No, yeah, you, no you one you else gets that, title. that. You want that title. You don't want to be the runner-up. You want to be the winner. <laughs> exactly. 100% here in Sheffield. It's quite big as well. Lee was one of the commentators of Sheffield yeah. last year. He's now back as a player and he's here in the finals in McKelly. The one thing I love as well is you've got the Italian versus the UK player. And throughout this 2018 season, Italy has been the dominant force in the European contest. Yeah, so been the question everywhere. is, is the UK going to be able to stop it this time <laughs> in this regional? Uh, we're going to see that right now because now we're going into team preview. Yeah, we're not going to waste any time. We're in team preview here for the finals. Recap of the teams. If you haven't seen them before, if you're just tuning in, Lee Provost is running Metagross, Tyranitar, Tapu Fini, Incineroar, Thundurus, and the Togekiss. Whereas Michele is running the Landorus, Raichu, Nihiligo, Cresselia, Gastrodon, and the Charizard. Yes, we've seen uh, a lot of these Pokemon already from both of these players. They've been on stream quite a while. Um, and I think from both players, there's actually one Pokemon that we didn't see. Uh, I don't think we ever saw the Toei Kiss on this no, side. No, not yet, no. And I don't think we ever saw the Nihiligo on Mikele's side. So that's going to be interesting uh, if they're going to bring that now, if they think that this is the right matchup for it. Um, and it's going to be a weather battle as well right now. We got the Tyranitar on Lee's side and we got the Sun on Mikele's side. And if I just look at the teams again, we saw Gastron in the semifinals. Yes. We did a lot of work for Mikele. And if I look at Lee Provost's team, it might be it might be doing the same here as, as again. 100%. And that Tyranitar as well, you just mentioned, talking to Lee in his um, interview after his um, semi-final game, he, his pick with Tyranitar, not only is this one of his favorite Pokemon, he's used it in previous formats and it's done him really well, but he said the weather's been on the rise with Charizard. Yeah. He's now facing that in the final. This could really be the pick that maybe will take him all the way. Yeah, so he is, he is prepared for this kind of matchup, um, but I'm not sure if he's also prepared for the Gastrodon, because that's something we don't usually see it's a lot with, tank, that, isn't it? with that Charizard. So Michele, it doesn't have like your regular Charizard Tapu Lele team that we usually see. Uh, so it's going to be different. So the, both these players will have to adapt and see how they're going to go into this matchup. 100%. And actually, looking at Michele's team, he doesn't actually have an Alolan Guardian at all. No. So there's no terrain going to be coming out from his direction. The only terrain force that can be here in the finals is going to be Tapu Fini. Tapu Fini, actually the most used Alolan Guardian here in Sheffield, um, way above Tapu Coco and everything. So it's kind of fitting. It's made its way here. But we're jumping into the finals. Give it up to these guys. Shout them out on social media. Get involved in the chat. We want to hear what you guys are hyping up with this game. The leads have jumped out here. Michele is bringing that Charizard and Landorus, whereas Lee has brought the Togekiss. It's here, it's in the finals. It's part of the team paired up with Metagross. Yeah, and we see now the Togekiss. And one thing that I also kind of want to point out about these teams is there's not one Pokemon that they have in common. There's such a diversity in this VGC 18 meta. And, but I think Michele gets like a really good re uh, lead here. Uh, the Charizard is really threatening. Togekiss isn't really going to do a lot of damage to it at all. And Metagross doesn't want to take any fire type attacks. So Lee's probably going to maybe want to scout out a little bit, maybe go for a double protect and see what's going to happen. Yeah, that is very, very true. We're going to see Landorus switch out straight away and we're going to see Raichu join the field. Pokemon that Michele has used so well and utilized it perfectly throughout this game. Lee going for a switch of his own and it's going to be the Incineroar joining the field, going to fire off and intimidate against these Pokemon um, and apply a fake out pressure of its own going into the next turn. Um, we're going to have to see if Fake Out's going to come out. No, it's just going to be a Protect here from the Togekiss. Not going to be going for any Follow Me st um, strategy as Charizard goes for Tailwind. So wants to get the speed up. He's got a speedy little Raichu there as well. Yeah, so Lee gets off his own. Uh, he brings in his own Fake Outer now. Uh, so he could also just try maybe to set up his own Tailwind here. 
Uh, Togus is in kind of an interesting position. Uh, it can set up Tailwind, but otherwise, uh, it's not really going to be able to support Lee a lot in uh, with this lead from Mikele at least. Uh, but Incineroar is offering a lot of pressure on both the Raichu and the Charizard because they can't really hit it. No, that's very true. Incineroar is such a dominant Pokemon here throughout the entire season. The moment it got Intimidate as well, it just rose up through the ranks. But Charizard here also going to prove that it is a fearless Pokemon, going to bring the sunshine to the battle. So the first weather is going to be sun coming off from that Charizard. As Raichu does go for the fake out here, going to target down the Incineroar. It does have the speedier fake out here. And Togekiss, having joined the field, is you know it's refreshed. It hasn't been out on stream yet. It managed to dodge out of the way of that heat wave. And of course, Incineroar can easily take that. Togekiss as well, proving it is such a valuable member, goes for a Tailwind one turn after Michele's one got set up. Yeah, so at least that means that uh, Michele's one is going to end earlier than Lee's tail is going to end. So that helps him a little bit. But on the other hand, both of Michele's Pokemon on the field right now are going to be faster than Lee's Pokemon. So, um, so far right now, it's not really useful tail at the moment. Uh, but this Incineroar is still in a really good position. Uh, we have to remember that this Raichu carries knockoff though. So mm -hmm. once it removes the berry, uh, this Incineroar is already a lot less threatening. We see Landris switching now from Mikele. Yep, Landris going to come in and try and negate some of that threatening power that Incineroar has by giving it an Intimidate as well. Preserving the sun in the back then, you can maybe bring it back in later if Lee has brought that Tyranitar and wants to set up the sand. Togekiss protecting once again, just want to stay out here on the field as Raichu goes for a Volt Switch. Going into that Protect, so it's not going to be able to switch out and ch um, change up all of Mikele's ball positioning, but Incineroar is able to get off the U-turn. So it's going to shoot right back to Lee and he's going to be able to bring another Pokemon in here. Yeah, so I'd be interested to see what he brings in here. Uh, especially next to the Tokus, you might want something that can set up. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see the Tyranitar, but we see the Metagross instead, which of course really threatens the Landorus on Miguel's side with a potential Ice Punch. Yeah, that's very true. Landorus doesn't ever want to take no. an Ice Punch. Um, e you know, even if it's an Assault vs. Variant, Ice Punch doesn't care about that at all. So yeah. Landorus possibly might want to get out of here. Yeah, what I'm assuming is Lee maybe just trying to play it safe. Um, the one thing he could also do is, is maybe just stomping cleanse from his Raichu. It's an interesting thing, as Raichu and Metagross actually speed tie, but we see a switch out uh, into Incineroar here. Yeah, changing it up a little bit brings back the Incineroar just to get another Intimidate off against both of these Pokemon. But of course, Raichu is still free to move. It could go for something like a knockoff, but no. Mikele really wants to get it out of here and reposition his ball position and is going for that um, Volt Switch. Connects it onto the Togekiss on this occasion and manages to shoot it back to Mikele and he's able to bring out another Pokemon. Oh, but what I'm really wondering is what this Landers is going to go for, because Mikele was just not afraid. He was not afraid of the Ice Punch at all, and Landers is going to go for an attack. I wonder if this is going to be a Tectonic Rage. No, it's just going to be a U-turn. Uh, so he was just predicting the switch out from Metagross, um, kind of reading into that, because uh, Lee was pretty sure that Mikele didn't want to sacrifice his Landers, but Mikele kind of just calling that bluff a little bit, uh, going for his own U-turn, just repositioning himself, and we've seen all of four of uh, Mikele's Pokemon now. Yeah, and he's got so much um, sort of switching position, yeah. hasn't he? He's got Volt Switch and U-Turn. Raichu here, jumping right back in, has to take a little Air Slush, though, so yeah. a little bit of chip. Yeah, that, that does nothing to that assault has Raichu. <laughs> um, and this Gastrol now is in a really good spot. Um, he doesn't really have a good way to hit that at the moment, but with Togius, the good thing you always have with Togius is you have that flinch chance. <laughs> that you certainly do with um, Air Slash and Serene Grace ability. That's what it's going for here, Air Slash into that Gastrodon. This might be Lee's sort of way of getting um, it to not move, but it breaks through and Cinderwall flinched due to the fake out and will have to take an Earth Power from this Gastrodon. It is Ooh. not enough to pick up the KO though, and Gast um, the Incineroar is able to get the berry that we've seen it paired with so often and regain a lot of health here. Yeah, so it's really important that Incineroar live that attack, uh, especially because he really needs the Incineroar for the knockoff pressure as well as the fake out pressure and just intimidate in general uh, against the Landorus on Mikele's side. So it's really good that Lee's uh, Incineroar lived there on 7 HP only. Uh, Togi is not getting that, that flinch where it's really known for <laughs> with the Air Slash and Serene Grace ability. Um, but Lee's still kind of struggling to do damage against this core of, of Gastrodon and Landorus and Charger just switching out. Well, switching out again, Gastrodon leaves the field and Landorus will come back in to get off another Intimidate. That's one thing that Mikele has done so well throughout this tournament and is utilizing it again here, is constantly switching up his ball positioning, not allowing Lee to get off the offensive pressure that he wants and then forcing him to switch in return. But it's going to be the Volt Switch again for Mikele, once again, uh, shaking things up. He switched out Gastrodon, he's now bringing out his Raichu, free to maybe bring Gastrodon back in if he wants, but it gives him all this utility to switch things up. And Gastrodon has rejoined the party here. It's going to be back to sort of threaten Lee's Incineroar again as Tailwind comes up from the Togekiss. So the speed advantage is once again on Lee's side of the field. Yes, yeah, so we see the U-turn now going into Gastrodon. And uh, sorry, I wonder what he's going to bring in now. And I really, we haven't seen the last Pokemon on Lee's side yet. Uh, and I wonder if it's something like maybe the Tyranitar or maybe the Tapafini. And it is that Tyranitar coming in right now. 
Yeah, Lee's favorite Pokemon here. It did him so well in his semi-final game to get him into this position. And bringing the sand in as well, that's going to have a little bit of chip damage to not only um, only his own Togekiss here, but potentially to any Pokemon that would switch in. But you have to remember, Mikele has Charizard in the back and it has Mega Evolved. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but if you're Lee, you're kind of in an okay position now to maybe go for a potential follow me to redirect the Drown EMC. Uh, which is a possibility from this Landorus, and maybe go for a Dragon Dance here to try and set up a little bit. Well, again, switching around the ball positioning, Raichu jumping in, jumping out. It's back in action here to have Fake Out into the next turn, and Landorus just goes for a Protect, not wanting to take any damage here, as Togekiss goes for a Follow Me. So potentially going to see a setup with this Tyranitar, just, you know, drawing in all of attacks, and yeah. that's exactly what we see. Tyranitar is going for the Dragon Dance. Yeah, and we've seen as well that this Tyranitar is backing the, the Dark EMC, uh, so it's going to be able to do a lot of damage to either of the Pokemon, and I think he especially wants to get rid of that Gastron as soon as he can. Um, but this Landorus could be a potential target as well, but at least Mikele brings in his Raichu, has fake out pressure again, so he probably wants to fake out Tyranitar and just switch out again with this Landorus to make sure that he keeps that Intimidate in the back, uh, which he really needs to kind of slow down his Tyranitar before it starts running over his team. Of course, and we've seen all of uh, Mikele's four Pokemon he's brought to this game. We know there's no Cresselia there, which the Dark EMZ is normally so useful for. So Lee's going to be able to utilize that against any other Pokemon he wants. He doesn't have to save it. Gastrodon has jumped right back into this battle as Tyranitar goes for a Protect. Raichu goes for the Fake Out. So Lee calling where that target was going to be and protecting as Air Slash comes out once again from this Togekiss. Going to go into Gastrodon, just keep doing a little bit of chip. Yeah, so Gastrodon is slowly going in very range here. Um, but if you're a Lee, you probably just want to target down this Raichu right now. Uh, you know it's Assault Fest, your Tyranitar is at plus one attack. So I'm pretty sure that a Crunch from this range should be able to pick up the Knockout. Um, and then maybe follow up with an Air Slug. But the one thing is though, you don't want to proc this Berry on this Gastron right now as well. Um, so the Gastron is actually going to protect. Don't be afraid of a potential Crunch from this Tyranitar. That is very true. Gastron could be key here, so it does want to protect, not take any damage as Togekiss goes for another Follow Me. Once again, drawing in all these attacks to protect this bloody Tyranitar. But first of all, it's going to be the Z-move. Is the Dark EMZ being activated on that Tyranitar? Which target do you think he's gone for here? I assume that this is, this is going into the Gastron here. Maybe he just wants to get rid of it as soon as he can. Because um, I don't think you need it for the Raichu KO at all. Um, so we're going to see how much damage this is going to do. Uh, it is going to go into Raichu. Maybe he was also expecting maybe a Lander switch in there. Uh, this is definitely going to KO the Raichu. Yeah, this poor little Raichu will be leaving at the end of this turn. Going to go back to Mikele here. Um, leaving him down to three remaining Pokemon. It's the first KO here in the finals. Uh, but interestingly, didn't go for the Gastron in a way. Probably was good seeing as it did protect. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the thing is now, Michele, Mikele gets in his Landers again. And now it's going to be able to intimidate this Tyranitar, which is now at neutral attack again. Uh, and in order to use the Z-move, so the Landorus feels a, li a little bit more safe at the moment. Um, so he's really got to be worried about still the ground EMC. That's where Togekiss comes in with his follow me support. Uh, and the good other good thing that he has now, Gastron already protected, and he didn't activate this berry. So a crunch into that slot should be able to pick up a knockout there. Uh, so we got kind of an interesting turn going on here, where Michele kind of is on the back foot, and Lee has all the offensive pressure with that Dragon Dance to Renatar. Very true, and as well, Gastron being ground type isn't going to take any of this chip damage from Sand that potentially you might want to protect, get a little bit of chip to proc that berry. We see players do yeah. that quite a lot, but Paul Gastron here is sort of defense is working against it a little bit. Tyranitar going for the protect, though, doesn't want to take any sort of tectonic rage or anything from this Landorus, which just goes for a rock slide. So that would bypass any follow me that Togeskis went for. Wasn't the button that clicked, though. It survives the rock slide. Now, what move has it gone for? Um, it does actually proc the berry, though, so good to know the item choice on that Togekiss as well. First time we've seen it on stream. Yep. You know, everything we're learning here is really oh, new, but it gets flinched. Wow. The, sort of, the one Pokemon that likes to flinch people with their slashes got flinched itself. Oh, that's really big. And guess one goes for recover as well, uh, as a Tyranitar protects, so that's really big there. And that was not what you want to see if you're if you're rooting for a lead there. And guess one is up to full health, and now it's definitely out of crunch range for sure. Uh, and Flinch on Togus just makes it, puts it in, in range for another Rock Slide in combination with Ice Beam maybe. Uh, so this is really what Michele needed to get back into this game. Um, but the Tyranitar are still a big problem for him. And I think he needs to call the Follow Me at some point in order to get that Crown EMC off. And hopefully get rid of it at some point. No, 100%. And Lee as well there, sort of playing a little bit conservatively, going for the Protect on his Tyranitar. When Landris only went for Rock Slide, he could so easily have gone maybe more on the offensive. Like you said, maybe go for that Crunch and try and pick up the KO on Gastrodon. Uh, but Tyranitar, you know, just going to shoot back to Lee here. We're going to see Incineroar jump out once again as Intimidate does play such a strong game here, negating any of the damage that Landorus can sort of build up against his team. As Landorus just goes for U-turn though, wants to play Lee sort of at his own game here with the Intimidate, shooting into the Incineroar. Just going to do a little bit of chip. 
But of course, now he can bring that back later on to intimidate that Tyranitar another day. It is in the back. It's going to have to come back out at some point. Yeah. But the Pokemon Mikhailay has decided to bring is that Charizard. So Sun is going to be out in force. Lee has the option to negate this by bringing Tyranitar back in later as Togekiss just goes for another Tailwind. I think that's the third Tailwind that set up this game. Yeah, the Togekiss is sticking around a lot on the field. And first you're wondering what it's going to do like offensively. But these Tailwinds could be really important. And Incineroar actually gets knocked out with that Earth Power. Um, but that basically gives Lee this, just a switch in into his uh, Tyranitar again, which could really threaten this, this Charizard. Um, but I think if you're Lee, you really gotta hope that you're gonna focus down that Landorus as soon as you can. Because those Intimidates are really uh, annoying for this Tyranitar, and I think he, he needs to keep Tyranitar alive as well. To just deal with this Gastrodon, um, and maybe set up some more Dragon Dances. But first, he has to focus down that, that Landorus on Lee's uh, on Mikele's side. Yes, he needs to get rid of that Intimidate user, and as well with this Charizard. You know, if he switches that Gastrodon, brings in the Intimidate user, that Charizard, we saw it in his top full game clutch out a victory, it survived a rock slide, so you can't underestimate this Charizard on Mikele's side, and he has safely brought it back out, like doesn't want to take any damage, and wants to maybe get that sun back up in his favor as soon as he can. So Landorus comes in, fires off the Intimidates, we'll now have to see what Lee has gone for. He went for the rock slide, but it avoids on the Gastrodon, the Pokemon that it really does need to flinch at the moment, gets a little bit of chip damage onto the Landorus, but what has this Togekiss gone for? Oh, it also avoids wow. on the Landorus the Air Slash, meaning that this Gastrodon's able to go for the Ice Beam, go into that Togekiss and do some good damage. Yeah, oh, it's really unfortunate for Lee there, because he really wanted to chip on the Landers especially, because I'm pretty sure that after one Rock Slide and Air Slash, it would have been in range for just another double up of those, of those attacks there. Um, but it's still not the end of the world, he's still in a decent position, there's still two more turns of Tailwind left, uh, but we saw already that Mikele's Landers is able to uh, protect itself. So maybe that's something that Lee has to take advantage of now, but potentially going for a Dragon Dance. It's going to be a protect on Mikele's side, like you said. It can protect, is what it's gone oh, for. Oh, wow, he's going and for it. And Dragon Dance, Lee being bold with this Tyranitar. It's not happy. It's been intimidated. It just wants to get its attack right back up there. Boosted its speed a little bit as well. As Togekiss goes for Air Slash into the protect, though. So he's kind of ignoring this Gastrodon at the minute. That goes for Earth Power, goes into that Tyranitar. The Sand boosting a special defense at the minute, which will certainly have helped him out there. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it, he still stays alive with both those Pokemon here. And now at neutral attack, uh, a Rock Slide. And an air slash might be enough to pick up the landers on Mikele's side on the field. Uh, I'm not sure about those calculations because we saw already that it's kind of it's kind of a bulky landers. Um, but if you're if you're Mikele, you probably want to save the landers. Maybe you just have to sacrifice the Charizard or hope for a potential rock slide in this. Uh, and I think Lee, Lee's playing is really smart. He's for now he's just ignoring the Gastron. He's thinking, like, okay, I just gotta focus down on its partners next to it, and then maybe Tarantar can can see how to win. Yeah, I mean, if you bring in Charizard, you might be sacrificing it, but you are then removing that special defense buff that the Sand brings um, Tyranitar, so your little Gastrodon can maybe get in there, get a, um, Earth Power off, and maybe pick up the KO. But first of all, Tyranitar does go for the Crunch, down onto that Charizard, so not a Rock Slide. Oh. Um, Charizard will oh. be surviving, and it also manages to avoid Togekiss's attack. This Gastrodon is now able to fire off this Earth Power. Tyranitar still manages to survive, though, despite the special defense. Yeah, that's really big. And oh, if Lee only went for the Rock Slide there, it would have been oh, so big. Oh, that would have been so good. Because uh, then, he, then he just gets rid of the Charizard immediately. And then he also has the Air Slash Flinch potential on the Gastrodon then afterwards. Um, but again, he misses the Air Slash. His Togekiss is just not, not lucky for him at all. It did so good at the beginning of this it game. Um, <laughs> but we're actually now in a spot where this, this Gastrodon is becoming such a big problem. It's just slowly chipping away at Lee's Pokemon. And uh, especially now that the sand is gone, like you said, it's really problematic. But I think Lee is hoping for some flinches at the moment. Well, he's going for the rock slide this time. It does connect. He's not got any of the accuracy problems as Togekiss is having at the moment. Charizard will be KO'd and will go back to Mikele, leaving him to his last remaining Pokemon. As Togekiss oh. goes for Air Slash, but it avoids. Oh, wow. And it breaks through, goes for an Ice Beam. This, I, It will pick up the KO on Tyranitar. I mean, if it had connected that Air Slash, that's two flinch chances that Lee had. Yep. This poor Togekiss, though, is not having a good day. No, that's really unfortunate. Um, but Lee's still not in the worst position at all because he has to, we saw that he has the Mega Girls in the back. With the Ice Punch. Uh, and it has that Ice Punch pressure, of course. And it hasn't even Mega Volt yet, so you're, he doesn't, he's, he's not getting intimidated, that's for sure. Um, but I think Lee might be uh, might be playing for some Air Slash range at this point. I mean, you can play for all the flinches you can. That is something that does often happen at VGC. We sort of say it all the time, but Mega is going to threaten with this Ice Punch. But how is he going to get rid of Gastrodon? Yeah, I mean, and Mikele is just going to protect his Landorus just to be safe. Uh, he knows an Ice Punch is coming, 
Um, but Lee also was oh, to yeah. protect. Maybe expecting an Earth Power from the Gastron. Possibly, or just wants to burn the Protect on that Landorus. Mm -hmm. So lots of Protects coming yeah. out here. Lee maybe scaling out what Michele wants to do. Double Protect on his side. And Gastron just goes for an Ice Beam, but to no avail there. Yeah, it makes sense that Michele tries to get rid of the Dogus as soon as possible. Um, because he doesn't want to get uh, into the Follow Me trap, where he strikes Earth Power to Metagross and then Dogus suddenly goes for the Follow Me, for example. So you don't want to do that. And if you're Lee, your timer is actually running kind of low now, and I think you have to make your decisions way faster um, if you're going to be able to KO this Gastron, because I think you might be, but you need your time, and he's going down into 30 seconds right now. He's really using all of his time. We saw he had problems with that in his top yeah. four game as well. His Fortune Cookie has warned him, though, you need to utilize your time while it still exists, otherwise you're going to time out and unfortunately not be able to make the moves. But he's clicked in the Mega Revolution on his Metagross. Oh, However, what? a Z-move comes out. That Landorus outspeeds, goes for the Tectonic Rage. It's a really slow Metagross, and this Landorus is just faster than it. It means it's, a, it's an adamant, really bulky Metagross. And Lee didn't go for the follow me option this time. No. And that's going to be really big because that's when you're able to pick up the KO on this Metagross most likely. Such a brave play by Michele though because he still has that Togekiss yeah. on the field. It could have gone for follow me and then this would, attack would have done absolutely nothing. But instead it's going to go pick wow. up the one hit KO on Metagross. Yeah, and I'm assuming that an Ice Cream is going to go into Togekiss now. And uh, yeah, Togekiss can only, he can only finish one of the two. So uh, it's going to be really tough for him. And, and he's not gonna even going to get to flinch. No. And Michele is going to be able to take game one here after knocking out the Togekiss from Lee's side. I mean, that was a crazy couple of turns yeah. there at the end, but Michele Gavelli takes game one here in the finals at the Sheffield Regional Championships. That was so intense there. You have the mind games with Togekiss. Is it going to follow me? Is it going to go for the flinches? If I was Lee, based on its performance in the last couple of turns, I wouldn't trust those flinches even no, to land. No, he's <laughs> been really unlucky with the, with the Togekiss, but I think it's an entire game. Um, but I think he still had some opportunities to get back into this game. But Michele just with that ground EMZ, just locks in the win for him as well. Um, I'm not sure if, if Lee in the end even had enough time left. Because I, I wouldn't, I would have less than 30 seconds, didn't he? Yeah, they? so this Gastron might have, even even if he got off the ice punch, the Gastron might have been able to outstall uh, Lee in the end. Um, so the timer is definitely something that he really has to worry about and really make sure that he doesn't uh, go for the same mistakes again and just clicks his moves in a little bit faster. Um, but otherwise, I think his game plan was okay. Uh, he, made, he made the right plays. His Tyranitar offered a lot of pressure. It was a great Pokemon choice yeah, for him definitely. in this game. Particularly with the weather wall going on with the Charizard, but you just mentioned timer quite a lot. If you actually look at the whole round time, that game one took 20 minutes. Yeah. It was very, very intense. The players, you know, if it goes to a best of three, we only have 50 minutes, not 60. So you never know if they want to keep up this kind of pace. We could even be seeing some kind of sudden death situation going on oh, here in yeah. the finals. But let's not hope for that. We're going to be jumping into the game two here. Michele only needs one more win to take the title here in Sheffield. Yeah, and I think he's really happy that he won that game one. Uh, because especially, I think, halfway through, you saw him looking a little bit sad. And things were not really going his way. Uh, Lee got up the Tailwind, he got up the Dragon Dances, and it looked all really tough for him. Um, but then in the end, just that real faster lenders than a Metagross proves to be the, the big difference there. Uh, but that's really important information for Lee to know as well. It certainly um, is, so he's he not going to make that it. mistake again in game two, of course. So yeah, we're going to see if he changes things up or if he just. I wouldn't be surprised if he just sticks with the same strategy. Uh, hope maybe gives Togekiss another chance. <laughs> and, uh, maybe he will play off. But Togekiss needs redemption. I mean, yeah. it was one of those Pokemon that was well. It stayed on the field basically the whole game. It set up, I think it was three, maybe even four Tailwinds, yep. but it didn't really do anything else. It just set up Tailwind, didn't get any flinches, didn't even really connect them. And it could have been a very different game if yep. that had happened. So Lee, he has faith in Togekiss, so I think we will as well. He's leading with Togekiss and the Metagross as Michele goes for Landorus and Charizard. Yeah, because the interesting part about, about this kind of lead is um, what I'm running from Lee. Like, if he led like his own Thunderous, it would have been actually really good against this kind of uh, lead from Michele. Because we know that it's a Scarf uh, Thunderous, and with HP Ice and Thunder Roll, it's going to be threatening a lot of Very pressure. Very true. But at least just sticking with his plan. I uh, think it's the right game plan, and I can't really blame him, because game one, it was really close. It came down to the wire, and he could have just as easily taken it. So. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we just see the same thing again right now. Just the Incineroar switch in and maybe you uh, protect for Tilly and Togekiss. Um, but the problem is that Michele offers a lot of offensive pressure now. Um, even though he's like afraid of the Ice Punch, this Metagross does not want to take a Flamethrower from the Charizard. It certainly won't. And again, we're going to see a lot of switching, I feel, in this game too. Incineroar is the first Pokemon to jump into the field other than the leads. I'm going to fire off Intimidate against both of these Pokemon. Of course, Lander is not a Pokemon that likes this at all. And it's going to be, once again, Sun. Sun's going to dominate at the beginning of this game, make it all nice and bright and shiny, and boost up all of those Fire-type moves as well. So 
not only for it, but also for this Incineroar. So yeah. even though it gets the fake out the next turn, if it maybe wants to go for a Flare Blitz in the sun, that could be a good offensive option for Lee. Charizard, however, goes for the Heat Wave. It is an accurate Charizard, this one. Connects on both of Lee's Pokemon, doing some really good damage to that Togekiss. As Landorus wants to get out of there, doesn't want that Intimidate to last. Not enough to push Togekiss over the 50% barrier, though. So it, we know it can take another Heat Wave if it needs to. Uh, yeah, if it needs to, but we also know that this Charizard has Flamethrower, so I wouldn't be surprised if Michele now maybe tries to bring in his uh, Raichu, but he doesn't bring in his Gastron instead, uh, offering pressure onto this, this Incineroar, and Tokus is still winning. Yeah, Tokus just does what it did so well for Lee, it's just sending up the Tailwind, but my question is going to be, is it going to start trying to go for those Air Slashes again? Uh, at this point, yeah, it's, it's probably going to, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised from Lee's hand if he just... This is a good time to bring your Tyranitar. Uh, you're just going to stop the sun a little bit, uh, make sure you keep up the sand and maybe just knock off the Gastron because this Gastron, he needs to get rid of it as soon as possible. Because uh, I feel like Tyranitar is basically going to win for him as long as he gets rid of the stuff. This Gastron and the, the Landorus, like the two ground types on uh, Mikele's side. But is no switches at all. No, and Air Slash, it connects. That's a start. It connects onto that Gastron, does a good bit of damage there as the knockoff follows up. Going oh. into the Charizard though, maybe just predicting some kind of switch coming in. And as you said there, Rob, he has got Flamethrower. That is what this Charizard has gone for and it oh, will pick yeah. up the KO on that Togekiss. So Mikele just wanting rid of this Pokemon, but it gets a flinch. It wow. gets a flinch and then gets KO'd. That helps a little bit at least, but oh, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think Lee saw that coming, that Flamethrower. Especially when he has, has the Tyranitar switch in there, so that's really, he just loses Togekiss. After it, it just, game one, it just kept being on the field. Yeah, it and stayed the whole game. It's <laughs> on throw in three times, uh, but now it's already gone after only one Tailwind, so it's a little bit trickier now for him. Um, and I'm assuming at least probably want to try to get up some, some Dragon Dance again, um, because he really needs this, this offensive pressure after the Tailwind's gone. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Landorus coming in. It's exactly what we've got here. Just wants to get an Intimidate off onto that Tyranitar and sort of force it to have to go for a Dragon Dance. Um, obviously, we do have Incineroar here. Can go, oh, it's just straight away going straight for this Dragon Dance. Yeah. Nothing else coming out from the Incineroar, obviously. I'm just going to negate that and get it speed boosted up as well. Even in Tailwind, you want that extra little bit of speed just to offset it in case that Charizard wanted to go for Tailwind as well and balance them out. But Incineroar just going to switch back to Lee, so I believe it will be a lot of the Incineroar Landra switching out. Who's going to get the Intimidate off on who? Exactly. Uh, and I'm assuming that this Charizard is indeed going to go for Tailwind here. Otherwise, you don't want to stay in the descent at all. Um, and we see him going for Tailwind, so it's kind of a risky play for Michele because, of course, Lee could have just as easily went for a Rock Slide there. Exactly. Uh, with the charge on the field, but he recognizes that this Charizard is not really the threat at the moment. It's not really doing any damage here in the sand. Uh, so he and he needs to get up those Dragon Dancers. And the U-turn is also really big because now he brings in his Metagross. He has that Ice Punch pressure on the on the Landers on Michele's side. So I wouldn't be surprised if Lee's maybe just predicting the Charizard switch in, going for an Ice Punch on this Landers, and just maybe going for another Dragon Dance. He could easily go for that other Dragon Dance, just try and get another attack stat up. But you also have to remember that Landorus outsped the Metagross. Oh, yeah, of course, um, yeah. So that is still that horrible threat of does he maybe want to protect Tyranitar or is Metagross? Which one would that Landorus want to target down in this position? But Mikele's going to go for one switch here. It's going to be the Raichu jumping out onto the field as Mega Metagross will come out as well. So just going to Mega Revolve on the field and bring this Pokemon we've seen so much of here into the finals once again. And I wonder if it's going to be bold and go for the Ice Punch. Landorus actually goes for the Protect. So no Tectonic Rages or anything coming out here. I wonder what Lee went for as well. He went on the offensive with wow. both his Pokemon, went for a Rock Slide. It does actually connect onto that Raichu. So the little electric mouse that's come in is going to take over 50% damage from that Rock Slide as Metagross goes for the Ice Punch into the Protect. Interesting play from Lee there. Maybe he was kind of hoping for a flinch there. Um, or either way, if he was like, okay, if you're going to ground EMC my Metagross, um, then at least I do a lot of damage with Rock Slide. Maybe put you in range for another Rock Slide to just pick up the KO there. Uh, but now Michele brings in his Raichu for fake out pressure. And I wonder how much uh, Dark Z is going to do to this Landorus, because I can't imagine that a neutral is going to be able to pick up the KO. Certainly not. Well, we'll have to find out if the Tyranitar does want to go for that option. Last time it went into that Raichu, um, and an Intimidate comes out once again from this Incineroar. Tyranitar this time going for the Protect, doesn't want to take a Tectonic Rage or anything like that, as Raichu goes for a fake out. It's going to go into that Incineroar that switched in, and it is going to be the Tectonic Rage. So. Do you think he was trying to target down the Metagross, or was he going for that Tyranitar that's protected? I would be surprised if he, just, if he just goes for the same target that he faked out, just going for the Metagross, um, because he knows that the Tyranitar can't knock him out, and with the fake out pressure, he just he just keeps his Landorus safe, but I wouldn't, he could also be in the Tyranitar slot, and it is actually going into the Tyranitar slot, so that's a good protect on Lee's side, uh, making sure he doesn't take too much damage there. Um, 
And the Intimidate will have helped as well by switching in that Incineroar. Oh. He gets a critical hit though, despite all of this, and takes it down to 50%. Poor Lee there, he looks a little bit crestfallen about that as the sand just goes around, does a little bit more damage to some of those Pokemon yeah, as well. That's, that's kind of unfortunate for Lee because, especially with the Gastron on the back, um, like this little kind of chip really matters a lot with those, because Earth Power doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but if you're already at half HP, then it's going to be way more, more relevant, of course. And it's going to be really tough for Lee at the moment, because just Mikele can just switch out his landers again, um, cycle these Intimidates, and then Gastron is actually looking really good still against all the three Pokemon that uh, Lee has left. Gastron has been such a problematic Pokemon for a lot of Mikele's top eight run. Um, some Pokemon not being able to shut it down at all. Oh, Raichu though, nuzzle. going for the little nuzzle, going to paralyze this Tyranitar with a little extra bit of chip, and it is fully paralyzed. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, this Tyranitar just cannot catch a break and it will not be able to move this turn as Incineroar goes for another U-turn. Not enough to pick up the KO on Raichu, but I believe Sand might be enough to finish it off here, and it leaves Lee able to bring in another Pokemon, but that Tyranitar is really being locked down by Mikele. Yeah, definitely, and now at least Raichu's going down to Sand, but it's, it's, a little, it's a little too late, I think, at the moment. Um, it's interesting that we saw it's kind of a slow Tyranitar on Lee's side, because Raichu actually outsped it, even after a Dragon Dance. Um, so that's probably just a really bulky or just an adamant uh, Tyranitar. He's there. done that quite a lot, both the Metagross was slow, yeah. maybe more bulky yeah. build, um, but you know, that's really not working out for him at no. the moment. Togekiss is gone, he doesn't have that Tailwind option. No, exactly, and now, and now he's really struggling against this, this Charizard, and especially the Landers in the back now. Because um, yeah, we already know that it's going to be faster than this Metagross, and if the, if the Landers is faster, then maybe the Charizard is even going to be faster as well. Um, so yeah, he's in a really tricky position here, and I think the para Oh, that's, that's really unfortunate for him. I, I don't think if he, see, if he saw that coming, um, or if he knew that, but it's a really good tech for Mikele to have it. Oh, it certainly was. And Metagross now facing down this Charizard, not someone it wants to face down, particularly as it knows it has the 100% accurate move of Flamethrower as well. It doesn't have to maybe cross his fingers for any Heat Wave misses. Yeah. It can be targeted down. Lee gonna get his Incineroar in though, wants to enjoy some of this sun as well, boost up its fire attacks, and maybe see if it can pull this back for Lee in this position. Charizard, however, just goes for a Protect. Doesn't want anything too crazy to go on and keep it safe here, as Metagross also goes for a Protect. So I think Mikele just trying to burn the Protect there from that Metagross, knowing it was going to fear all those Fire-type moves. As Gastrodon, though, what a little champ here, goes into the Incineroar with the Earth um, power. Procs the Berry, though, but this is the problem Lee's got at the minute with the three remaining Pokémon. None of them like ground moves. Yeah, and then Mikele has two ground Pokémon remaining, and then even the Metagross doesn't even outspeed the Landorus, so it's... Oh, and it, that's that's also probably one of the reasons why he brings the Togekiss uh, and why he really needs it in this matchup. And he, he just lost he it, lost too it early. so early. Yeah. Uh, so that's really going back to to haunt him here a little bit. Uh, but at least he has the Vega pressure now, and maybe if he gets such a potential lander, on switch it. But Mikele is not going to let that happen. No, goes for the fake out here into the Charizard as Metagross will go for the Ice Punch. It's not going into a lander, as it will go into the Charizard and pick up the KO. So at least Lee's um, Metagross doesn't have to worry about any fire type moves, but it does still have to worry about both the ground Pokemon on Mikele's side. Earth Power, as you can see, does so much, takes it down to over 50%. It's not going to survive another one of those. No, exactly. Um, yeah, and this lander is just going to be able to go for Earthquakes right here, right now. Um, I'm not sure what he's going to be able to do against that. Uh, maybe we gotta hope that it's uh, <laughs> this Metagross speed ties with Landorus. Um, oh, you never know. Anything could happen. We've seen some absolutely crazy games here, but you're quite right. Landorus can just click, um, sort of Earthquake, and just go for it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can't take that. So maybe if you're Lee, I think your only option left is to maybe switch out Incineroar, get out of the Intimidate again, and hopefully that you can somehow catch Mikele off guard with the, with the, with the fake out pressure. But it's, it's looking tough for him. Yeah, we will have to see exactly what he's going to do to try and come back there. He's got his Tyranitar in, so he's got the sand up, giving himself that little bit of a special defense boost from that Gastrodon, but he has to be able to move as well with his Tyranitar. Switching in, this might take a little bit of chip damage and then could very easily be paralyzed. Metagross and Gastrodon, though, just going to go for the Protect, leaving Landorus able to go for an Earthquake. Good little Gastrodon there protecting, doesn't want to take any damage from his partner, nor does Metagross, but this Tyranitar coming in will be taking the damage from this Earthquake, is it enough to pick up the KO? Yes, it is, but this leaves Lee, he, I know he sacrificed his Tyranitar here, but he now can bring back that Incineroar and use Fake Out. Yeah, exactly, and we already saw that Mikaela's Landorus, it has Protect, so the Fake Out Ice Punch play is not really a good option either, because I'm assuming that Mikaela is just going to go for Protect with his, with his Landorus. Um, so yeah, then I'm kind of wondering, like, what are, what are the options left for him? I think one of the options maybe for Lee is to just Fake Out maybe the Gastrodon, or maybe Ice Punch knock off the Gastrodon, Hope for a potential critical hit, uh, as the lander is protects, um, but it's looking really good for him at the moment. Yeah, Michele's just got so many options to shut down whatever strategy Lee wants to go for. Yeah. If he wants to go for a fake-out play, he can protect. Um, if he wants to go for 
anything with his Metagross in terms of Ice Punch. Landorus, we've seen it outspeed, so there just isn't a way for Lee to kind of get the upper hand here against Mikele. Landorus goes for an Earthquake straight away, wow, though. so no fake out. No fake out whatsoever. Maybe Lee just trying to make a bold play. And we see the Incineroar is surviving here. Unfortunately, our graphics aren't letting us see what happened with Metagross. Metagross had a critical hit. Oh, it has unfortunately been but... KO'd. There's been a handshake. I feel like this could be the end here. Gastrodon does survive the knockoff, and it goes for an Earth Power, which means that Michele Gavelli is going to be your regional champion here at Sheffield. Wow. This is incredible. What an incredible run for him here. That Gastrodon has championed him the whole way to the final. I am so, so delighted for him. Yeah, that was a really impressive play by Michele. Just a really well-played finals in general. Um, I think Lee also, he put up a really good fight. Game one was so close. Game two, he just, he just lost his tokens a little bit too soon. Um, and then we just, he had the, the two ground types on Michele's side, just proving a lot of issues for, for, uh, for Lee there. So in the end, yeah, congratulations to Michele. He played that really well. Uh, deservingly champion uh, of this regional and uh, yeah, he'll be there in uh, day two worlds now for he sure. He will, he's got that day two and yeah. you know, commiserations to Lee as well. He played so well and he went above and beyond his expectations mm -hmm. or needs for this event. Yeah. He's got his day one invite so we'll see him in Nashville along with Michele. Yeah, sure. um, so, you know, remember those names, they're going to be around for a while but huge congratulations to Michele. I know this is something he's sort of been after for a really long time mm -hmm. and he's such a phenomenal player, still yeah. so young as well, he's only 17. Yeah, that's crazy, right? And he's setting, so many good he's setting the already. benchmark. Right, yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. He just comes on the scene really young and he just dominates this regional right here. And yeah, really clean victory. And again, we see Italy win another another event. Uh, yeah, Italy's been dominating <laughs> this season. I, I can't, yeah, can't deny it. No. Yeah, there will be a lot of Italian players who have been at home watching the stream, I know, cheering right now. Mm -hmm. So they must be very, very happy about this. We know, I'm sure you're very, very proud of Michele. We are as well. This has been such an incredible tournament. We will be grabbing Michele for an interview. I think we're going to throw it over to our other caster, um, who's been wonderful on our tech during this final, so he can interview Michele and find out more about that game. But don't go anywhere, guys. We're going to bring you our regional champion in a few moments.
Hello Pokemon trainers and welcome back. It is my honor to introduce you to our regional champion here in Sheffield, Michele Gavalli. Congratulations. Thank How you. are you feeling right now? I'm feeling satisfied and very happy. Very happy. Yeah, very dominant in performance there. Uh, outspeeding the, meta, uh, the Metagross with your um, Landers helped you a lot, of course. Yeah. How did you prepare for this tournament and what was your thoughts going into this tournament? Well, I prepared by um, testing some matchups of team that weren't very common like one month ago, mm -hmm. but after maybe tours or some American regionals came out, like Chalk. Uh, because when I built the team, I wasn't even thinking about a game plan against Chalk because it wasn't that common at that time. But after that team won in tours, uh, I thought, yeah, maybe someone is going to use it, prepared, so prepared I need to be prepared. Uh, I liked how, uh, we talked about that in your last interview, but I liked how fast you entered your move. It looked like you were really prepared, uh, knowing what's going on, what, knowing what you have to do. Um, but what does this, like, I don't think you have won a regional championship before. What does this... Uh, no, actually I won one, in, by, I was senior. Back in seniors, fair yeah. enough. Uh, now joining in Masters, I think you did like pretty well in your first Masters event at the European Internationals yeah. back then. Now you're here in Sheffield winning the Regionals, very uh, impressive performance. I want to ask you, uh, now that with your over 1000 CP you have qualified for Day 2, yeah. uh, what are your goals for the World Championships? Uh, my goal is to make top cut, like is to make 5-2 and I'll be satisfied. So well, even, even if I lose early, I will be satisfied even with a top cut. We are a top cut, yeah. So top cutting world championships, a lot of players have done it before, but it's a very impressive performance. I'm um, looking forward to see you and a lot of your Italian friends compete at the day two international championships. Yeah. Uh, I want to say once more, congratulations. Thank you. Amazing performance. Have fun at the world championships and Thank with you. your prize money. And we, as Team Limitless, joined by my two co-casters, want to say thank you for watching. Um, thanks for having you here with us on stream. Congratulations to your performance. Congratulations you. to all of our top finishers here in Sheffield. This is the last European event. We want to say thanks. Watch out for the North American International Championships and the World Championships later this summer. And then see you next season here in Europe.